Hot hatches have exploded in popularity over the course of the last decade or so. The idea of getting a four-cylinder turbocharged hatchback with a manual transmission is something that, you know, sounds good to pretty much any car enthusiast out there. Unfortunately, you know, here in the United States, we seem to get the short end of the stick and has like a really bad record of like missing out on a lot of these performance-based hatchbacks for like whatever reason. We just we just don't normally get them. However, in 2012, late 2012 specifically, we were finally graced, finally, with the Ford Focus ST. And even though it was no RS just yet, these cars exploded in popularity for the younger car enthusiast audience and quickly became a direct competitor with cars like the Volkswagen GTI. Today, we will continue to see Focus STs be the go-to platform for those looking for something fun, relatively quick, and functional for everyday use. So whether you're looking at getting into a Ford Focus ST or have just picked one up and are searching around for some modifications due to it, you found yourself in the right spot. As today, we're gonna to be going over everything you need to do to your Ford Focus ST. Of course, before we go ahead and dive into all the fun stuff and start talking about like all the cool parts and whatnot that you can do to make these cars faster, sound cooler, or look the best, we should first go over a little overview of what the Ford Focus ST actually is. Stuff you should know before jumping straight into modifications. Any weird quirks that they might have or anything that is just an absolute must do. First things first, Ford Focus ST saw its introduction to the US market, like you said, in 2012 for the 2013 model year. Packing a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine under the hood, providing about 252 horsepower to the front wheels. Not bad for a little egg of a car. And they're all manual, which is kind of neat. Available in three trim levels, ST1, SC2, and ST3. Main differences being the addition of the moonroof and the ST2 and ST3 packages, and a much better interior when compared to the ST1. The ST3 package also saw some nice carbon pieces as well as in the form of a boost gauge, trim bezel, some door handle inserts, an e-brake cover, and a shift knob. Also came with Recaro seats, which is pretty neat. Overall, car is pretty dang reliable when it comes to looking at doing basic bolt-ons and a tune, and they hold up pretty well. However, anything further than that, like an upgraded turbo or things like that, is where things start to get a little bit hairy. Just keep up with maintenance and you should be golden. Right out of the gate, there are some things that we do recommend doing pretty much right away to help ease the mind a little bit. From the factory, Ford had this lovely idea to get some extra miles per gallon on the highway. And how do they do that, you might ask? Well, they have like a little shutter that shutter thing that blocks off air to the intercooler that makes the car more aerodynamic at high speeds. I mean, like I get it, but at the same time, I don't get it. Just delete that as soon as possible is garbage, you don't want it. While you're at it, the stock intercooler really isn't anything to write home about anyway. So you can benefit pretty you know, nicely from an upgrade to your intercooler while you know, you're in there. With all that out of the way, let's get into some details of what we would recommend doing to these cars. First, we'll start off with some good old wheels, tire, and suspension, since you know that's like what we're really good at, Thin Industries, if you didn't put it together. What are people running for these cars? What fits? And then move into some performance stuff. How can you wake these cars up a little bit? Put a little pep in their step. And then wrap it up with anything else that we would recommend as far as like exterior or maybe, you know, just drivability. New set of wheels can really make or break the look of your car. It's like the best or worst thing that you can do depending on how you do it. So let's make sure you do it right the first time so you don't avoid looking kind of silly. First thing you need to know is your bolt pattern. Now, unfortunately, this is where the Focus ST has one of like its major downfalls. They chose a stupid ass bolt pattern for this car, five by 108 is what you're going to be want to be looking for. Not a popular bolt pattern by any means, which unfortunately also means wheel options are going to be somewhat limited. However, you still have some great options to choose from, and here are three that we would recommend. We knew that the Focus ST crowd needed some love on the wheel side of things. So when we were making our own wheels, Anovia wheels, we wanted to make sure we offered something for them specifically. The Anovia Kinetic was our answer. Five spoke directional wheel done the right way with a left and a right side. Designed to clear the brakes of not only the ST, but even the Ford Focus RS. The Kinetic provides the perfect fitment for these platforms as well. Not to mention the finishes that they come in look pretty dang good with you know, the Roden Bronze and Raven Black finishes. These wheels are extremely lightweight, meaning that they're good for track use or anything else that you're wanting to do with them, but they're also super strong. 
Rotiform actually recently came on board with a new wheel available in 5 x 108 as well. The Rotiform KB1, six spoke wheel with a turbo fan outer design that looks absolutely killer. Designed in partnership with Mr. Ken Block himself. Ken Block KB1, yeah. Looks really good in these cars. The only thing is that, you know, you're gonna have to be comfortable with running a 19 inch wheel setup because they only come in 19 inch diameters for some reason. The third wheel we would recommend is a very popular wheel, not only among the Ford Focus crowd, but a lot of different car platforms as well. And one that we talk about quite often because it deserves it, the Enki NT03. Multi-spoke wheel design with that outer ring on the spokes makes it look really nice. It's like a nice OEM plus feel that adds to these cars. Enki, obviously a really well-known, respected name in the wheel industry, and the NT03 features all the same properties that make wheels like the RPF1 so popular and so good. For sizing, something like an 18 by eight and a half plus 40 or to an 18 by nine and a half plus 38 is roughly where you're going to want to stick around. When you get a new set of wheels, more than likely, you're gonna need to get your hands on a new set of tires as well. If you're looking for more affordable option tire, like the Nitto Neo Gen is going to be, you know, kind of the best of both worlds. They stretch good, they perform well, it's decent you know, tire for most seasons. The Falcon FK10, a little more performance side of things, a little higher cost, and then topping out the Michelin Pilot Sport all season four. Really the best of everything out there. The all season tire, the high performance tire, you know, Michelin does a good job on their stuff, so I would recommend that one. No matter which way you go about it, even though we would recommend probably getting some suspension first, because you can always benefit from suspension, even on stock wheels and tires, you're gonna wanna upgrade your suspension. And you can go, you know, three different routes here. You can get something like lowering springs. That's the cheapest option to go. It's one of the easiest. You can get a set of springs, swap them out. You get a nice little drop in ride height. You get to maintain all the factory stuff as far as your suspension goes. Otherwise, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, really dial in that fitment, get a little bit lower, get some more performance out of things, adjustability as far as damping and all that, you can go with a coilover setup. BC Racing makes a perfect coilover setup for these cars. It works really, really good. And we really recommend it for pretty much any aftermarket setup out there. Now, if you wanna really go balls walls and you know, stun on us people, you can go get some airlift performance air suspension. By far, one of the easiest, you know, setups to go to as far as air suspension when it comes to pretty much any car out there nowadays. And the Ford Focus ST is no different. Airlift makes a fantastic kit that's super easy to install. They got instruction manuals that are super easy to follow, specifically catered to that car. And you'll literally see pictures of your car while you're working on it. it. Makes it super nice and easy. And of course, it comes with everything you need. Moving on to the performance side of things is where these cars really tend to shine. Ford made it pretty straightforward with a four cylinder turbocharged platform. So things like your simple bolt-ons and a tune will really waken these cars up quite a bit and make them an absolute blast to drive. When looking at bolt-on modifications, typically you're looking and talking about things like an intake, a downpipe, and an aftermarket exhaust and to wrap everything up a tune to go along with it. All these are great things to do to these cars to unlock some extra power by getting more air in and more air out as effectively as possible. As we mentioned earlier, an upgraded intercooler is a great modification to do as well. Aftermarket support for these cars, pretty decent, not gonna lie, and they get the cob treatment for sure. They got hit heavily by cob parts from intercoolers to intakes to even the exhaust and of course the tune to wrap everything up. Makes it incredibly easy to match everything together and gives peace of mind knowing that the off the shelf tune that you have for your car is made for those parts that you put on the car. They're you know specified for those specific parts. It gets the most out of them. Other brands to look into that we would recommend for these cars include Mountain, Boomba Racing, Turbo Smart, and Engine. They make all some great parts that you can you know piece together everything that you want to get it you know performing like you want or even sounding like you want. Any other modifications really come down to really you know what you're looking to do with the car or really what trim level you got or anything that you want to really personalize it with. These cars are you know not gonna lie pretty soft looking from the factory there's no doubt about it there's a reason why people call them you know the little eggs that they are so some arrow pieces definitely go a long way on these cars kind of help you know fill out those edges a little bit make them look a little more aggressive especially with a lower ride height maybe a little bit of a bigger wing on there really helps fill these cars out and honestly looks really good in our opinion so if you have a Ford Focus ST, what modifications are you looking forward to? Let us know down in the comments below. And of course, if you need some wheels, tires, or suspension for your Ford Focus ST or anything else you might have, you know where to go, fitmanindustries.com. You can check out that link below. But I'm Gels from Fitman Industries. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.